No God. No God. No God. Those were the words of a man who apparently thought God had something to do with Hurricane Katrina that hit the Gulf Coast of the United States in 2005. He was one of many who prayed as he climbed into his attic to wait out the storm in the high waters. Many people who had not prayed in years, if ever, called out to God when that tragedy struck. Fast forward six years and listen to this report from the Associated Press on Friday, March 11, 2011. After the offshore earthquake and resultant tsunami that rocked Japan, for more than two terrifying, seemingly endless minutes Friday, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in Japan shook apart homes and buildings, cracked open highways and unnerved even those who had learned to live with swaying skyscrapers. Then came a devastating tsunami that slammed into northeastern Japan and killed hundreds of people. The violent wall of water swept away houses, cars, and ships. Fires burned out of control. Power to a cooling system at a nuclear power plant was knocked out, forcing thousands to flee. A boat was caught in the vortex of a whirlpool at sea. The death toll rose steadily throughout the day, but the true extent of the disaster was not known because roads to the worst-hit areas were washed away or blocked by debris and airports were closed. Large fishing boats and other vessels rode the high waves ashore slamming against overpasses or scraping under them and snapping power lines along the way. A fleet of partially submerged cars bobbed in the water. Ships anchored in ports crashed against each other. The tsunami roared over embankments, washing anything in its path inland before reversing direction and carrying the cars, homes, and other debris out to sea. A marketing employee in Tokyo is quoted in the same article as saying, I thought I was going to die. Or think of the tornadoes that hit the southern part of the United States during the last week of April 2011, leaving over 340 people dead across seven states, with over 250 of those deaths in Alabama alone. This tornado storm system was the deadliest since March 18, 1925, when 747 people died. An 82-year-old man in Alabama said, I give God credit for surviving the storm, but he is struggling as he attempts to recover belongings from his destroyed home. Across many of those same states, severe tornadoes had already destroyed lives back in May 1999. Stories abounded. A two-year-old child ripped from his father's hands thrown dozens of feet into the air before being slammed against the ground as the tornado tore through his family's home, thousands of homeless families sifting through rubble. In one instance, a huge funnel cloud skipped across the ground for four hours, killing at least 43 people and destroying more than 1,500 homes and hundreds of businesses. That 1999 storm was classified EF-5 the most powerful tornado there is, with winds of more than 250 miles per hour. Twelve years later, another EF-5 tornado decimated Joplin, Missouri, taking 160 lives. Or consider the tsunami that hit Indonesia the day after Christmas in 2004, killing hundreds of thousands of people and inflicting terrible suffering. An earthquake in the middle of the Indian Ocean set a massive wave hurtling across the surface until it smashed into the coastline full of unsuspecting people. Or what about earthquakes? In Haiti, a year after the earthquake that decimated the country in January 2010, there were still more than a million people living in tent cities. World Vision was working in Haiti before the earthquake, but in the aftermath, providing shelter has been the priority of the organization a basic but critical step toward rebuilding an entire country. How about tidal waves? Different from tsunamis, which are caused by an earthquake under the sea, tidal waves happen when the moon's gravity creates bulges on the ocean surface and the winds head to shore. When a 30-foot tidal wave hit Paw New Guinea in 1998, it killed 7,000 people wiping out nearly an entire generation of children. 
And then there are mudslides, catastrophic mudslides in Venezuela in December 1999, killed an estimated 20,000 people in just a few days. It seems that almost every day, a disaster hits somewhere on our planet. With 2011 seeing the United States in the crosshairs of disasters, a record 10 U.S. weather catastrophes, blizzards, tornadoes, floods, drought, and Hurricane Irene, carried price tags of $1 billion or more each, breaking the record of nine set in 2008. Globally, with Japan's and New Zealand's earthquakes and flooding in Australia, the total was estimated at $265 billion in the first six months of 2011. So we ask a fair question. Where was God? It's a great mystery, isn't it? Why is God seemingly so silent in the presence of the human suffering we see all around us? Why doesn't He speak? Why doesn't He explain Himself? Doesn't He understand the bad press He gets from natural disasters and the human suffering they cause? God's silence forces those of us who believe in Him to rethink our faith, cope with our doubts, and debate whether He can be trusted. And if we can survive all that, we're still left with the responsibility of trying to explain that trust to our friends who themselves are dealing with questions. Just as earthquakes create aftershocks, natural disasters create religious aftershocks. Believers wrestle with doubts. Unbelievers use disasters as justification for their refusal to believe in a loving God. Either way, Disasters force us to ask ultimate questions, yet we don't know what we'll find out. We wonder if we should even dare to search for answers.